So again, this is for my viewers that uh, today we have with us uh, Miss Shamita Datta. Miss Shamita Datta is a uh, uh, is 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 going to is is right now pursuing uh, B Tech in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Sri Mata Vaishno Devi University. She is right now in her fourth year. She will be passing out next year. That is 2023. but uh, the interesting thing about shamita datta is that uh, she managed to get a foreign internship uh, in canada that is in university of concordia if i am right so uh, shamita welcome to the um, interview and uh, the important question as uh, i always say is that how you managed to get a foreign internship uh, and that to in a very prestigious university uh, in your third year Uh, yes, so I had like just randomly come across the university when there was COVID, and we were just really bored with our lives and just looking for something to pass our time with. And so I saw the internship in my first year, and the eligibility criteria was that I could apply it at the end of my second year. So like I just okay. had it at the back of my mind that this is one internship that that I would look at once I complete my second year. So um once that was once I was like almost done with my second year in August I applied for the internship so mm-hmm. basically like how the uh, application process and everything goes is in July uh, like the professors first submit their proposals and like all of that gets reviewed by my tax and everything mm-hmm. and in in by the end of August you can like uh, all of the uh, projects that have been approved are published on, on the website and you mm-hmm. can just go through the uh, Uh, go through the projects there are like a lot of projects in a lot of universities so i just went through those projects and i started to shortlist my projects and then in september uh, sept yeah september was the deadline so before that i like I have, so you have to finalize at least 3 and at max 7 projects for the internship and mm-hmm. they need to be at at least 3 different provinces so uh, i just you know uh, went through all the courses shortlisted my uh, the projects that i like the universities that i like that were uh, that were of my interest the projects that were of my interest and mm-hmm. then i just uh, got my requirements from the university and like some other application forms that i needed to fill mm-hmm. and so yeah that's how i applied for the internship so is it like that only one university you applied or you applied to lots and lots of universities moreover Uh, it's only like you apply for the university or you apply for the lab or the department uh, specifically uh, that uh, so i applied to seven different universities and okay. it's like it's it's all on you like you it, you can uh, if you need if you want to prioritize the university then you can do that or if you want to prioritize your project then you can do that so what mm-hmm. i did was a mix of both of those Uh, mm-hmm. So okay, so now how you have to uh, select your project, uh, select your projects and the universities is that you need to submit seven uh, minimum three and at maximum seven projects at different universities, or they could be two projects at the same university. That, that's not a criteria. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you need to uh, rank them according to your priority. So mm-hmm. like you need to rank this. So I because I could take I could apply to seven projects. So I did apply for seven projects, and then I rank them according to my preference. So I did a mix of both. Uh, some of uh, like my first priority was which was one of the at uh, which was at one of the better universities, and mm-hmm. then the mm-hmm. next next projects was other projects that I uh, preferred over uh, like the projects that were of more of my interest and that I thought that I could get into. So it mm-hmm. I, it was just a mix of both of those. Okay, so it's it's pretty simple. But the thing is that, uh, what is the eligibility criteria for these uh, say projects? Like, uh, do you have uh, a criteria for minimum CGPA? Then whether you have to be in the first five percent or ten percent in your university, or uh, about the letter of recommendations, or whether you have to write an SOP. So please uh, tell us in detail. Yeah, so uh, you don't. Uh, okay, so like I'll start with uh, the a little bit about the internship. So the internship is for twelve weeks. So between May first and July twenty or uh, July thirty first, you have to begin. Your, you have to start with your internship. So that you can conclude your internship in the end of October. So it okay. has to be an internship for twelve consecutive weeks. Where and it's a on like it's an in camp in person internship. So it was just made online once before uh, once because of COVID. But mm-hmm. like that's not an option. You can't just do it remotely. So you have to be uh, you have to be at the university while or like the lab uh, when you do the internship. So it's mm-hmm. for twelve weeks. 
and uh, what are what are your need for the uh, for the internship like the eligibility criteria is basically just you need to have at least one semester and at maximum three semesters at the end of your internship so like once you're done with your internship you should have at least one and at max three semesters remaining at the university where you're currently so it it precisely means that somebody can apply for this uh, internship even in their second year uh yes i mean if uh, if yeah yeah like you you need to apply it at the end of your second year to be able to do it at the end of your third year but some some people can apply also in the end of their first year so that they can do it in the end of the second year because uh, if there is the requirement of like there should be three more semesters required or one more semester required in the university mm -hmm. so you were having two semesters more required when you completed your internship right because yes. right now you you are in your seventh mm -hmm. semester after that there will be the eighth semester so you have two semesters so somebody could have gone even uh, after second year say after the fifth semester that also is possible right no so I'll, no no because it's only a summer internship so you can oh. only go at the end of the first year or at the end of your second year you can only go at okay. the end of your second year if you're in a three year degree if your mm -hmm. undergraduate is of three years and okay. you can go at the end of your third year if it's a four year degree and there's also the option that if you are in an integrated course of five years which mm -hmm. in which you get your masters so then you can go at the end of your fourth year. Ah, okay. But okay. Uh, like you can't apply for the internship if you're just a master's student. But if you're in, in an integrated course, then also you can apply. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the criteria. And uh, oh yeah, and the uh, university has to be registered under the AICT University or the Shastri Indo Canadian Institute. It should be like in uh, it should fall under one of the two institutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the minimum uh, eligibility criteria for the CGPA was uh, an eight CGPA. Eight. So like it was an eighty percent, and uh, mm -hmm. an eight CGPA is the minimum criteria. Mm -hmm. And other than that, you don't need like an English proficiency exam. But uh, but because there are some provinces in Canada which are, uh, and there are some universities in those in those provinces which are majorly uh, French based, like their uh, mm -hmm. curriculum, curriculum is in French. So mm -hmm. if you're applying to one of those, then you might need a, a French. Proficiency exam, but I am not really sure of that because I didn't have that. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like there are some universities which uh, in which the like the means of education is in French, so you <laughs> would need some type of certificate for that. And uh, also, you need like uh, at least one LOR, which could be like uh, some person that you, some professor under which you under whom you've done a research internship, or just <laughs> like one of your academic professors. <laughs> and we also and and just a uh, just a normal CV. And they also send you like the format. They send you a sample word document, which is which shows the format of the CV. So I just put my details in that format. Okay. So you don't need to write a uh, write a different statement of interest or a statement of purpose for the program for the internship. Uh, there are just you just need to fill a form in which there are some questions that will ask you about your skills, your interests, or your achievements. In which you mm -hmm. can just there there are very simple questions that you can just answer in two fifty to three hundred words. So that's mm -hmm. all that's needed. And oh yeah, there's another interesting thing which I've not seen before was that you don't need to submit your application. If you mm -hmm. if you've like met all your uh, criteria and if you've submitted your uh, like if you've completed your details and everything, once the deadline is reached, the form your information automatically gets submitted. So you don't need to like uh, and there's like no there wasn't any uh, application fees or anything. You just mm -hmm. fill in your details and everything, and you get uh, like uh, your details automatically get saved once the deadline has reached. And mm -hmm. then uh, like after you've done all of this, you've submitted your form, you've, uh, you're, you, you know, you've passed all the eligibility criteria and you've completed your application. After that, uh, the professors, uh, you, oh, you are like not supposed to contact the professors directly under which you're doing the research. Yeah, right? obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So like uh, the platform, uh, they like have certain algorithms or something, I don't know, but like they do the matching of professors and interns. And mm -hmm. if you pass the criteria, if you're eligible for the internship, then they'll match you to the professors, and then they will rank all of the interns uh, based on their profiles. And then uh, you can, and then uh, in by the end of February, I guess, yeah, by the end of February, you uh, get an offer if you're selected. And mm -hmm. uh, you, so like of the seven projects that you apply to, or how many projects that you apply to. You once you get an offer, if you want to, if it's like not the first preference that uh, was that you had selected, you still have to accept that uh, that uh, offer. In uh, and if you accept that offer, then your profile might be sent to another professor if they are like still looking for an intern. And then so like that's mm -hmm. how based on priority you might get your project. Okay, okay, okay. 
so uh, do you uh, uh, like need a work visa uh, over there for the uh, for the, say going for this internship or you go on a very normal visa like a tourist visa or something uh yeah so there is like a special visa there is like a special uh, criteria which is a 120 day work visa for researchers specifically okay so mm-hmm. you apply for that so that so then you just get the your visa with the visa that you get is the work visa but uh, in in other situations you have to apply for a work permit as well separately but you mm-hmm. don't need to do that for the internship because like that visa uh, that visa itself has like the uh, it like has it allows you to work for 120 days as a researcher it means up to up to 120 days you can work yeah yours was a 12 week that means around 90 days uh, yes yeah yes it was like 3 months yeah around 90 days 3 months 90 days yeah okay 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 so how is say working in a foreign university is different from say working in an indian university oh yes it was it was really different and it was it's just the sense of independence that i got there was just <laughs> like such an experience and mm-hmm. especially like in indian university most of the indian university universities there are just so many restrictions and mm-hmm. like in canada they, you're just an adult so like they don't really care like my mm-hmm. professor he did not care how i was managing my time what i was doing he just cared if like the work was done and mm-hmm. like being they, they being professional yeah, yeah that like, is the most important thing <laughs> yes, like that, you have to be professional <laughs> like that's yeah. all that matters and also yeah like i found it pretty I don't know. Pretty nice that the weekends there are for are actually weekends. You're not expected to work on the weekends at all. Mm-hmm. Like my professor, also, my professor himself was like, "Why are you trying to do get work done on a Saturday? It's it's the weekend. Mm-hmm. Enjoy." And yeah, they, you know, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like asking everyone about their weekend plans, their Friday night plans. So they're just very mm-hmm. cool with the fact that you need to relax a little bit and you can't just be work work work. Yeah, work hard. then party harder yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very important yeah so uh, but like the work culture over there apart from like say five days of work and two days of uh, enjoyment mm-hmm. but uh, how about the lab mates and uh, when you are working you are a ug then there must be some pg some phd some post docs and all these people who are working in the lab and uh, how how the environment and atmosphere is Yes, that was actually not the case for me. Like in most of the for most of the interns, there were there was like this hierarchy of the professor that uh, who was the supervisor, and then the PhD students, master students, and then the undergraduate interns. Mm-hmm. But in my case, that hierarchy wasn't there, which was a little shocking to me because I was like, I'm going to be directly contacting the professor, so I might have to do a lot, get a lot of work done because it's just me. So like, mm-hmm. if anything, if any results are if you know i want to get any results out of this research then it's like all on me so mm-hmm. that is a little surprising for me but that is not the case for everyone <laughs> like there were a lot of other interns who were like i was directly in contact with my professor so i was just meeting with him every week and mm-hmm. but for some of some of the other interns they just met their professor like once or twice and they mm-hmm. were in touch they were in contact with the phd students or the master students so that depends mm-hmm. on like the professor and how he wants to do it but uh, he did have like a group of students who were also doing research under him as masters and phd students so they were all really helpful because i was getting stuck it in the middle of it a little bit because my internship was in math and i am an engineering student so there were some concepts that i was not exactly clear that were not exactly clear to me so mm-hmm. i had like some questions and i also felt a little you know stupid by just asking the professor all of those doubts <laughs> He was yeah. just very nice because I was like, you know, I sh- he expects me to know this probably, but he did not. Like he understood it that I am just an undergraduate student, so mm-hmm. there are a lot of things that I didn't know. So he did like he uh, sent me the contact of like some of his master students, and he included me in that group as well. So there were some other master students who really helped me a lot, mm-hmm. and I was just like asking them all of my stupid questions that I was too embarrassed to ask the professor. <laughs> So I mean yeah like that group was and and that group was like really helpful because mm-hmm. they were just like they were just helping me for me and they were like they were all really nice they were like a nice group of students a really cool bunch of math kids nerdy math kids <laughs> the <laughs> <All> math <really>. geeks <laughs> yeah. yeah so I was about to come to this that uh, tell us more about your internship that in the twelve months what was the objective and how you people go on to achieve. Yes. So, uh, like, 
obviously because it was my first research experience and just a three month research experience so the like in the the proposal the research proposal that the professor had sent to me once i got admitted was really intensive <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. it was like it seemed like i was as a little shocked I was like will we get all of this done because like i'm not so sure but like the mm-hmm. professor was like you need to aim higher so that like you need to aim your arrow higher so that it keeps land somewhere far <laughs> further than <laughs> what if you just don't aim high <laughs> so like uh, it was and it was like it was kind of and okay so like what i was doing was comparing algorithms and mm-hmm. i was writing like the codes for those algorithms and first i had i had to just understand the concept better before i could start working on the algorithm so mm-hmm. one like it, it was i think after 2 3 weeks of starting the internship that i actually started to do what i had to do because mm-hmm. i had to kind of you know build a foundation to be able to do that successfully yes yes but yes but then uh, but then once that was done uh, it was it, uh, the process kind of did speed up a little bit after that was done and i did uh, like make the algorithms and i had regular meetings with my professor where he helped me with my codes and he helped me where i was not able to or i was stuck and i was not able to move on and uh, to you know try to achieve what we had thought to achieve that comparison that we had thought to achieve so yeah yeah so uh, uh, are you people also coming out with a research publication from this uh, project and will you be the co-author of that as well Uh, so i will not be uh, that's like not the case for me that is the case mm-hmm. for some of the interns but for me what i was hoping to aim with my algorithms the objective that i was hoping to get the outcome that the professor ha- was hoping we would get we did not get that outward so like in the comparison of the algorithms what we had thought would come out to be the best algorithm was not the best algorithm mm-hmm. so uh, i had so i have to kind of now change work on to go to work on changing like some of the criteria for the algorithms so that it uh, so that i can prove that it's better but like i was not able to do that in the 3 months in the duration of 3 months so i will not be like that that was like honestly that was never the aim of the professor mm-hmm. because it like it's just you know yeah, like he was like just do the research <clears throat> and if you get like if you know we are able to get something that is worthy of publishing a paper and that can lead to publishing a paper then great but like if not then it is just a great learning experience and just a great research uh, a great learning experience in terms of research and math and like all of these things so okay, that was okay, not okay. the aim for my professor but, but not this oh, sorry mm-hmm. no but uh, i'm a little bit uh, like uh, butting in mm-hmm. uh, but there must be like that uh, now you people can collaborate uh, like you people means you along with all your co-workers or co-authors or whoever your lab mates were you people can always work even from an online uh, understanding to work on a project and uh, come out with more publications even if the first one could not uh, <clears throat> materialize into a research publication but uh, definitely you people can work on and you might be having this thing in your uh, mind as well that uh, you have to collaborate more and uh, you can come out with some publications even uh, by the time you will be say graduating from this right and uh, it was just me doing the research internship so it was not i so i was not able to gather all of like gather everything that i needed to be able to publish a project but for the interns who were doing an internship who were doing the internship with masters and phd students also working on the same project for them it was like a sure sure thing that they would publish a paper by the end of it but mm-hmm. yes like i can uh, i could uh, i discuss that with my professor if i could still be working remotely and work on the same thing and eventually publish a paper or something but like he told me that it was illegal to be working on uh, uh, to be like working on a research at which is like a kind of related to a university like a part as a okay. part of the uh, okay, university okay, okay. without getting funds and mm-hmm. you don't get funds if you're not in the university or at least in the country so the research ethics uh, and all those things will definitely come into play and if suppose somebody is not there and is remotely working and is not associated with the project directly and they are not getting paid so definitely those issues will also come okay but so <clears throat> at the end how was the experience and uh, what were your takings from it yes it was just really it was really great experience and i honestly felt like i was 
pretend playing to be an adult for three months, just living on my own, being on my own, doing my own thing, going to work and getting things done. <laughs> but uh, but it was like kind of a smaller, better version of what being an adult is really like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because like my professor was also very blunt about that because he was like, if you are doing, if you are going to like do a graduate thesis or like a PhD, then it will not be this. fun and hmm. uh, like it will be much more st- m- much more rigorous and like you know a r- little yeah, more yeah it will be stringent mm-hmm. yes <laughs> but it was it was like a really great experience and just being in a different country and uh, the you know doing the research there i, I was working on math which is just i just love doing that and you're hmm. kind of getting you're like getting paid for studying math which is amazing <laughs> amazing yeah that is for sure that is for sure because it's not only about uh, getting certain things done it is also like learning a lot from there that uh, makes you a better person as well as a developed person because every day you have to develop as a human being as well right yes, so that is a very important so uh, like uh, can you also suggest because this is something which i can always put down in the description mm-hmm. box and all like suppose there must be a lot of students who are interested in foreign research or say foreign internships or projects mm-hmm. so what what means what should be their way of looking into things where they should look for what are the things which they should target so that they can not only look for that okay these are the websites where i can go and find a research but these are the things which i should do so that i can also get the project so what are those things which you will like to suggest to your juniors yes so like one would obviously be uh, like maintaining your cgpa because that is the that is like the, that is the first eligibility criteria that is like if you don't if you do not have the minimum requirement then you're just not considered and you might have all of the skills but unfortunately they would not be considered and along with that like just working on your skills like doing some courses going for an internship and internships and trying to make your profile look better so because i did not have a research experience but i did have other internships i had done some courses and like i had done a lot of courses and internships to prove it to like kind of prove it to the professor that i could do the re- i could do research mm-hmm. uh, despite the fact that i had not done it before uh, first thing is that is research publication uh, an important factor if you want to apply for a project outside i mean it does say in many places that mm-hmm. uh, like there I, before i applied i read it on a lot of sites that the only way that the only way when you will get apply, uh, when sorry the only way that you will get into this internship is if you have a paper published and if you have done a research for, uh, internship before but that is that is like not the case for me or a lot of interns because i mean ideally yes it is obviously better if you have a research internship I means it is desirable but it is not necessary Yes, because also it is uh, it is like not very really common for uh, undergraduate undergraduate students students, papers yeah. published, and okay. especially like especially in other countries, it's really not uh, because like this is an internship where a lot of students from different countries apply. So like in a lot of countries, like in India, we have a lot of uh, we are, like we have the thing where a lot of people are especially engineering students. They are doing a lot of internships, courses, and like papers, research, a lot of that. but uh, in canada also the undergraduate students are not doing that much in, that many internships mm-hmm. so like that's the difference so uh, it it would obviously be better on your profile if you have done that but if you haven't done that I, my thing is when i'm applying for things just apply for things even if you think you're not going to get them because what do you mm-hmm. have to do and hey, in fact if, in fact i guess so one of the better way of looking into these things is like uh, Uh, you can definitely go and check the blogs where people are writing about all these things moreover whenever you know that okay these are the websites through which uh, you can get the information about all these projects and stuff so once you go and click over there so you can always see the eligibility criteria the requirements of different universities and in last 5 years what they have been doing and stuff yeah. like that so with that you can always make up your mind that okay these are the things which i should concentrate on and after that i can always look out for these kind of opportunities yeah so that's the way it is in fact the thing is like now since you have been there so you can always guide a lot of students who are planning to be. but for you it might have been very difficult because you were not having somebody to look forward to that okay this boy or this girl or this senior of mine has gone over there so i can always talk to him or her and get to know about him as i remember uh, in our university there was one guy who went to check republic 
he was from computer science uh, he passed out somewhere in 2016 i guess so uh, he went to check republic for his intern that was the mm-hmm. only case which i knew but then i came to know about him when you went to canada like uh, going to a european country um, if it is not germany or uk mm-hmm. uh, i don't think so it's a very big thing similarly uh, going to us and canada is difficult it's always difficult so if you have made it to canada it's amazing <laughs> it's really amazing yes and i mean I, that just kind of reminded me to say that it's like getting these internships are not as difficult as it is finding the internship finding the internship yeah, yeah like, if you actually look at it like because okay yes like there was there was another intern with me who had not applied through this process she yeah, she was just directly contacting her uh, she was direct she was like just directly emailing professors like all over the world so like mm-hmm. she had internship offers from canada from australia from new zealand so like she had a lot of uh, like she had gotten a lot of offers so yeah i mean and i just i didn't know that that was a thing honestly and i didn't mm-hmm. know that we could do international internship before i found out about this internship so mm-hmm. i mean yes i do think that the bigger thing is you know just finding out about the opportunity because that takes more time than actually that takes more time obviously it's like making the wall no once yeah. you have made the wall painting the wall does not take much of time but getting the wall done cleaning clearing and all these things you know taking the fixtures out and stuff like that yeah. anyway so uh, thank you very much shamita for uh, spending some time this uh, afternoon so that uh, uh, a lot of students may be benefited by this because uh, there are a lot of students as i know who want to go for a foreign internship and they do not know the avenues through which they can apply and uh, by this interview not only that they will come to know about the avenues but they can also directly contact you because you are in the university right now so yeah. they can directly contact you and you can spill the beans to them <laughs> okay so thank you shamita thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you